Hi everyone and welcome along. Now I don't own a cat myself but I hear around Christmas time a cat and a Christmas tree can be quite an interesting combination so we're going to have a bit of fun with that and do a new watercolour Christmas card design with some cats playing around in the Christmas tree and of course if you're not interested in learning any Christmas card designs then this is another really good tutorial on some cat painting. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right so I've started off by drawing in a central line and then two lines coming down to get the basic shape of my Christmas tree and now I'm just going to imagine uh, drawing in a pot and the base of the tree just as the really really simple lines and then we're going to put in some cats now for those of you who haven't already um, watched my sort of introduction to simple cat painting we do begin with some sort of some basic shapes essentially we start with if we're going to do a cat we'll do a cat sitting from the side here um, start with a shape basically two overlapping ovals with a leg for the paw there and then you can have your, your cat head coming up off the back and putting it in there. We're going to, it's going to be quite like big cats, quite small Christmas tree. And then what I want to do is I want to have a few cats just sort of poking out of the Christmas tree itself as if they're sort of sat inside it. So I'm going to just draw in a few, a few shapes of cats just sort of sat inside the Christmas tree. Maybe just one sort of poking out here. Just doing a basic face. And then we'll have another one sort of maybe just sat at the top facing away from us all and then turning around so we've got the back and then turning around obviously the ears so we're just doing really sort of basic basic shapes um, and we'll have one just sort of leaning up with a paw so get our basic oval in and the other one looking for a looking for a bauble of some sort and I think that's where we'll begin so I drew in some more um, cat's tails and, and one just poking out from here. We're going to focus on painting the cats in a loose watercolour style so I've lightly rubbed out the pencil and I'm going to start with this one at the top and we've got some yellow ochre here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice sort of fluffyish texture using my size zero brush, yellow ochre, nice and loose and doing little brush strokes just dabbing down the body and you can see that there are little bits of unpainted space and we're just getting a nice light base colour and we'll go all the way down the tail as well and also the head now at the moment all I'm going to do is just sort of focus down on a nose sort of getting a slight sense of a, a head that goes that way and now I'm going to get a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of Payne's grey mixed up to make a really nice dark colour and what we're going to do is we're going to send that down the middle of the back so that's just that curve down to the tail there and then we're going to use some of that colour to Get a few tufts on the tail there. 
Now that's so wet at the moment that you wouldn't be able to get any sort of nice detail or stripes just yet but it's good because we're just building up lots of layers of colour at the moment. We're just going nice and slowly but we can just do a few tips on the ears and a little bit on the forehead there. So that's all we're doing at this point. We're just starting the cat's colours. So let's now go for more of an orange gingery cat. So here I'm going to paint in a mixture of cadmium orange and yellow ochre. And again, you know, the cat is half concealed by the Christmas tree. But always try and sort of, even with these basic washes, I'm just defining the, the sort of central line down the nose there. I'm getting almost a lighter patch or a different colour patch where the, the cheek is. And I'm get a tiny bit of cadmium yellow to just do a bit of a different colour on the chest there. And now again, whilst it's still wet, we're going to put in a a colour that's going to sort of blend out and, and not sort of have too much definition, but it's a great base for when we put in more patterns. So I'm just dabbing along the edge there and tips of the ears and on the forehead. And you can always use that colour to help get a bit of texture on the tail. Right, let's have slightly silvery bluey grey cat. So I've just had a bit more Payne's grey there. Okay, and this time we just see the face, so we need to focus in on getting that central sort of triangular shape that goes up into the ears. And then I clean my brush off and I'm now just sort of filling in the sides with a little bit of more dilute colour. All we're doing is trying to sort of create shapes at the moment, just with very minimal colour. And now we're not going to see too much of this cat. He's, he's well lodged in the tree. <laughs> it's funny, I, I, I'm not a cat owner. I do love cats though, but um, you just hear all sorts of stories of cats and Christmas trees really not getting on too well. There we go, just adding a little bit more of a accent colour whilst it's still wet. And I think we'll do a really lovely sort of fluffy cat, almost like a mancoon, a Maine coon with the big cats. Um, so I'm going to start again with the yellow ochre down here and I'm really going to push out the brush on this one and at this point I'm going to bring in different colours even at this stage because so we've got that Payne's grey colour and then we're going to have a bit of burnt sienna It's important to not overwork this kind of technique because it, you could end up with just a big, big old blob. We will of course be going in and doing another layer of this, but for now. fluffy tails. And 
just finishing it off a little bit. So again, that's a nice base, base amount of colour for a simple sort of approach to a main coon. And then up on the ch on the head again, just keeping it simple. So starting off, just getting that sort of forehead down to nose line. And we're not going to do much more than that, apart from bring in some colour for the ears. Maybe a few more tufts, but we will look at the face in some more detail when we've got all these base layers in. And then I'm going to do a black cat here. And this is quite a useful technique, actually. So when you have an animal that has a, a, a large amount of black colour on it, either its coat or feathers or fur, you'll notice that the light catches on the black and you see lots of beautiful other tones like blues and browny blacks. So I'm going to start with a mixture of Payne's Grey and Mars Black with the paw. And then I can just drop in some more concentrated Mars Black at various points, but just keep on mixing it up. in a, a nice concentrated blob of that Mars Black and then there we go, finish it with the tail. This is a slightly some more smooth haired cat. And so that's really sort of how you can get nice amounts of detail, even with a cat that's seemingly quite difficult to paint. So I'm just doing a little bit more of a, of a back leg paw there. And then we've got one last tail sticking out, so. So as I said before, remember that this first very wet layer is all about just building up some extra sort of texture. Okay, we're gonna let them dry and now add some more detail. So how to draw a cat's face? Well, I think a lot of people find this very challenging. I find um, starting actually with the nose is a good place to start. So I've mixed up a little bit of yellow ochre and permanent rose and I'm just drawing a little heart shape quite low down on the face and then from there I can sort of draw an imaginary curve up to the ear and along there we're going to find the eye. Now whether you actually want to draw a line there or it's just an imaginary one but it can be very, very helpful. So there I'm gonna now just place in a little bit of, I've got cobalt turquoise. And we'll do this one again. So sort of imaginary line up there. if you're doing the cat from the front, like this one here. So we had that V coming down, which gives us our little heart shape 
nose. And then sort of thinking there from the ear to the nose. I like to do two little curves that sort of are, are coming down to the nose there. And then I'm going to put in some shape like that. So there, I mean, obviously each cat breed is going to have a slightly different shaped eye, shaped, well, not necessarily a different shaped nose, but sort of just slightly subtle differences in where things are. So again, we're just still very much at the sort of loose phase where we're just placing in these simple shapes. And as soon as we start getting a bit of detail on them, everything will start to come to life and make sense. So I think it's time to do just that. So up here, I'm gonna come in with a much more concentrated dark color. Um, I've got sort of a the Payne's Grey shadow mix and I'm going to sort of bring some stripes down the forehead and then I'm also going to bring some around the side and then down the back and because our cat has dried now we need to be careful that these Stripes still look like part of the sort of nice loose watercolour cat. So what I'm still going to do is I'm going to get a slightly more sort of con um, diluted bit of paint on the brush and just sort of mess about with the colours a little bit. very slowly but surely a cat starts to appear and you can have some fun with sort of the ways in which you create your new textures um, for this sort of marmalade cat I'm doing little dashes into the fur with just a slightly darker more concentrated orangey brown colour and then for my sort of lovely grey silvery cat I can just use more concentrated versions of the colours I've already used and just sort of give a little bit more of an edge and then of course we're going to be looking at putting in the little mouth so down from the nose and also that little chin I put in just underneath and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blend down of both of those because I think what's important is not getting too much of like a really strong line from those. That's what makes all the difference. A little bit more of that colour. So let's just do a little mouth and chin. 
And you're not going to see a huge amount from the side, but And then our mancoon, what I want to do is really sort of get more detail by adding just darker colours. I'm using a size 4 tenths brush, which is my smallest, smallest brush. going to go over each layer that has now pretty much sort of blended into a very pale paleness. But now I'm also going to be aware of the back leg, that, that pencil sort of shape we painted at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of squash up the stripes around there and then let them let them go And not forget about that that paw. And then if you want to get a slightly larger brush, you can just sort of smooth over everything a little bit, give it a little bit more of a blend. Now we'll bring our cats to life by really getting some detail in on the eye. I've got some Mars Black here. And I'm just doing a little dab that sort of gets in touch with the sort of the top half of the eye. And I think that's quite important um, to just show, let me show you here. So we get a little line going, little eyelid there. And we painted in those eyelids before. Well, I'm calling them eyelids, they're just more of, there's like a dark, almost like an eyeliner uh, across the top of a lot of cats eyes sometimes an animal or anyone you're drawing an eye on can look a bit too startled if you don't pop that little sort of lid over the eye. Now I'm just adding a little bit more Mars Black in some of these cat designs because it really does add a nice bit of definition. Or a little bit of the, the sort of colour of the cat itself. Okay, let's paint a Christmas tree. 
So we've all, uh, well, if you haven't already seen, I've done a Christmas tree tutorial um, just last week actually, where we painted some different types of tree, but within there, I painted a classic Christmas tree with some really simple techniques. So I'm just mixing up a pine green. So I've got my sap green here, which is my, my classic green I use. A lot of people say my sap green is a little bit more bluey and uh, like fresh green than theirs. They say their green is a bit of a yellowy color. And so for you, you want to really get in some, some cold tones, so mix in some blue. This is French ultramarine blue right here. Um, I'm still doing it anyway, even though my sap green is quite a bluey green anyway. And I've got a size zero brush again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin right at the top. So that pencil line I drew was very handy. And I'm just using the central pencil line. I, mean, I, I put it a bit on a wonk this top tree because this cat has sat up there and we've got to imagine where our tree comes out. Now some bits of the cats that we've painted might now get a little bit covered up but essentially I'm using this colour there we go so you see the, the tree branch sort of coming out over the cat there but we want to keep the tree branches varied in their concentratedness of colour because we don't want this to just be one really sort of overpowering strong dark tree. So I'm just carefully going around the cats. And the other thing is I'm going to put a few baubles in because I think that's one of the main reasons a cat and a Christmas tree is such a an interesting mix because I think they rather like the look of all those baubles. So it's now time probably for a slightly larger brush as the tree gets a bit larger but it's also really important to have um, have the control in moments like this when you're going around the edge of the cat and you don't want to cover over all your lovely work you've done so far except when you do like that I'm just gonna have the cat's tail sort of intertwining with the tree so I'm gonna move on to a slightly bigger brush and carry on down Time for finishing touches. I have got my Fine Tech metallic palette out to do some baubles, partly because baubles look really cool when they're shiny, um, but also because this is quite an opaque watercolor. Um, and the good thing is, is if you paint your tree in this way with lots of, sort of unpainted space, We've got to have the bauble that the cat's playing with. Um, then even layering up watercolour on top of something like this will work just fine. But if you want to get your hands on some metallic watercolours, you just can find the link in the episode notes below. These are called Fine Tech and they come in all sorts of colours. And when you paint them on at first, they look a bit dull. And then as soon as they dry, they become really beautifully shiny. So let's finish this off with some last little details. So our cats haven't got whiskers yet, so they need the most delicate of whiskers so get your brush with a little bit of shadow on it but then you can wipe it off as well and get it really really nice and dilute because we don't want too much because those things can make make it just look a bit heavy really 
but you just need the suggestion. And even though we can't see our lovely black cat's face, we can see a whisker or two. You might want to add a, a string or two to your baubles. I've put a few on the ground here that have been pulled off. And then last but not least, it's a very gentle bit of shadow, just to sort of place our cats and our tree. Because I've got this cat just a bit further round at the back, so we need to make sure they're all sort of on the same, on the same ground, you see. So that's a really, really dilute bit of shadow. And there you have cats in a Christmas tree. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you liked it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you get on. And I want to give you one last reminder of our watercolour advent calendar. The 4th of November is the last day for international orders and from then on you can get your digital download. So just check the episode notes below for all the details. Until next time, bye!